Hey everybody, so we made it to yet another Wednesday. Thank you so much for coming by and hanging out with me. Today is part one of a five part series of how to paint the portrait in India ink using my ink mixtures on tinted paper with white pastel at the end and actually white uh, illustration colors by Drew Blair in the beginning. So it's gonna be very exciting. Let me very quickly go ahead and put in the authorization for the chat. So if I see you guys there, I can interact with you. So it's been a pretty uh, warm but rainy day here in Northeast New Jersey, just outside of New York City. And uh, autumn is here, but almost half here, right? It really hasn't gotten too, too hot yet. It doesn't feel like autumn just yet. Let's see if I remember the password. Can't make any promises, but all right, looks like I did. And if anyone's there, I'll be seeing them in just a couple of seconds. Tone, how's it going? How you been? Thank you so much for coming by. Wendy, how are you? Good to see you. So this is Willie, fantastic. So we got three so far, which is really very cool and very exciting. Uh, just bear with me one moment. What I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and put in my videos here. Let's see. So I can see it on the big screen. So this way, if there's any glaring mistakes, I'll be able to see it rather quickly. Let's see. So we are just doing this here. And let's see if that's here. Okay. okay, here we are. So, all right, great. So I just went ahead and clicked that, and there we are, perfect. Okay, so this is the beginning. Mike, how's it going? Good to see you. All right, so we always know the beginning. You know, first week is always just really concentrating on that drawing. Although I did project the drawing, it's not good enough. We really have to make sure that all our ducks in a, are in a row, so to speak. So what we're gonna do is put on our gloves. Let's see. So the paper here is the gray by Canson called the Color Line Series. It is by far better than the De La Rowney color uh, Canford cardstock that I use in the past. So this really takes to the paint very well. And then the ink, it's just, it's just fantastic all around. I can't tell you how fantastic it is. Uh, I do have a fan that's kind of loud, but let me know if that is uh, something that is bothersome to you guys. It is so much better, Wendy, it really is. So what I'm going to do, now there's a program I want you guys to look up. It's called Pure Ref, and it's P-U-R-E, and then REF, one word. And, and I'm gonna do a video on this. And what this video is, it's a software where you could have your reference on the top at all times, which is really fantastic. And you can just pull it right from the web or anything like that, which is really fantastic. So I'm just gonna very quickly pull up my, rep my image here. Okay. Let's see if this is the one. Okay. All right. Good. So, all right. So, I'm ready. So, it's important that I have the right reference, of course. So, definitely look on the pure ref. Oh, so Mike got his 2020 last week, but the air cap with the needle guard is bad. Badger is sending me a new one. I'm glad they're taking care of you, Mike, but so, so bummed out that it wasn't exactly what you, you needed. So, uh, it, I mean, it didn't come in perfect condition, so I'm sorry about that. Sorry to hear that. Let's see. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that, you know, the important areas are well drawn out. And that would be the eyes, and that's the focus. You want to make sure that those eyes are the right size. Just because I projected it doesn't mean that it's correct. 
and you want to look for the negative space as well but it works good with the open needle cap just fine okay great is that that is the 2020 right the regular 2020 or is that the slim mike Now these are small shapes here, but they have such a focus that you want to make sure that it is perfect. Now one of the things would be like right here where you would see Now you see when I blow it up how crude the initial projection is. Very, very crude drawing. So I want to make sure that I have all the aspects. And one of the aspects is, is that it's the way the circle sort of cuts in like here, which is very important, comes out, and then the angle of when it come, cuts in. Those are things, if you don't get it right, it's very unforgiving. And of course, her pupil is huge. We want to put that in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move over to... Uh, so Wendy, what did you pay for? What was it that you're referencing? Was it pure ref? And as you can see, I'm making sure that the second eye, you know, how it inserts under the eyelid is very, very important. And you wouldn't want to trust anything mechanical. You want to trust your eyes. Oh, well, the thing is, you can hit zero. And that's on how much did you pay? Because uh, if when you download it, if you hit zero, uh, it doesn't make you pay. Now here we're going to work on the nose and now we do have some very crude shapes. Hey Rick, how's it going? How's everything, man? So we want to get the subtleties of this nose here, of her nose. And everything is going to be very, very soft edged in this portrait, you know most of your shapes there will be some relatively hard edges here but mostly it will be soft oh okay tone i'll see you when you get back a dollar fifty i didn't know it downed it down to one euro oh my goodness so now it won't let you download because it wasn't enough So what you want to do is you just want to just pull that over here like that. Oh, your computer won't run it. Oh man. So you, you're having trouble with pure ref. Now I know you have to make sure whether it's Apple or, or whether it is, uh, PC, that might be a conflict issue. So you see how how more refined I'm getting with the drawing. So if we uh, come over here, you'll see that you have this here, and then it's this very soft shape over here. So that's what I'm actually going to look for.
and you can go ahead and very softly shade that just to just to get a feel for it you're going to erase this of course but you want to get a feel for that for that shape there very important same thing with here now also you always want to take note when you are drawing it out of what the angle is right you have the eyes going slightly down so it would be probably be almost at three o'clock just a little bit below three o'clock but what's interesting is that her mouth is going down at a slightly steeper angle angle you know we're not perfect you know you see those drawings where you have the axis lines and everything it's not that a lot of times that you know everyone's perfect with the axis lines being parallel to the center line you know so I think uh, the center line and the, the parallel lines are not always parallel so you want to make sure that you don't get stuck in the dogma that you you do see the the you know the major rules but those rules don't always apply as in this case 10.9 or higher oh I see. oh okay so yours is 10.13 okay that's not good I mean there must be some sort of conflict going on with your system so you see right now we're already refining but I'm not going too crazy so let's go on down to the mouth and this is going to be very interesting so what I'm going to do we're going to blow this up again okay so you see here's the mouth and it's very soft but we still want to make sure that it's not as crude as this right so let's go ahead and we're just going to lighten this up you know tapping it with the kneaded eraser oh man Wendy that's horrible yeah pure rough is such a good uh, solution So one of the things that you want to look for is the angle see this is much steeper than here in the eye but you want to take note of that so you're looking at this uh, like I said probably a little bit lower than three o'clock so you want to make sure that you're echoing that in your drawing so a little bit lower than three o'clock Like I always say, you know, going straight in, you know, like a cowboy in with the airbrush is really not doing you any service. You really got to spend like the first, I would say the first at least a half hour to an hour just refining your drawing because, you know, that's everything. So what you're doing, you're working things out with the pencil and, you know, it's far more forgiving than the ink. So that's why you definitely want to go this route. Now, one of the things you want to look at when you look at something is our inclination right here. You see how this lip is, guys? You don't want to, you know, my, my conscience really wants to put a line here, but there really isn't a line there. You know how it comes in, it sort of just sort of blends in. So really stop yourself from putting in that line. So when it comes to the lower lip, most of the definition of the shape is really going to be this dark underneath. That is probably what you want to look for. Rather than, see this is not just an airbrush tutorial. This is basically a tutorial on how to see as well. So a lot of times the description of a form is actually what's around the form or the shadows that the forms make. 
So with that being uh, mentioned, let's go ahead and see here that we are actually going to work on the form of the shadow underneath. That is going to describe the lower lip more than any kind of contour in the lower lip. And we can always adjust this later. Now one of the things you want to look for is where does this shadow stop, right? This cast shadow. So what you do is you form a parallel of uh, a vertical line straight up and you can see that it stops just before the nostril. So in our drawing just before the nostril is where we're going to stop it. And right there is where that shadow sort of ends. So what we're doing right now is just mapping everything out and then this is all soft. Now where we can go ahead and make sure that you know it pays off dividends is we're going to look at the contours and make sure those contours are beautiful. Not necessarily correct because you probably did it correct but what we're going to do is we're going to work on beautiful contours. One of the things when I actually work on contours is I like to go down and up when doing contours. So I like to come down and then up. And that keeps us from actually putting too much of a mannerism in our drawing. So you go down and up. Same thing here is that you go up and then down and then what happens is you find that beautiful line. And you can do a line 10 times but the important thing is no matter how many times you do the line is you want to make that line look as if you did it all in one breath. That's the trick. Not the trick but that's the the look that you want because you want to get that line perfect but you want to make it beautiful. And how you make it beautiful is how you make it look sure. Like that's what you wanted to do. Like it was uh, a no-brainer as to how to get it, even though it was difficult to find. So Willie, how do you like your Extreme Patriot Arrow? Because I know Willie purchased it. Same thing, we worked on the beautiful contour here. Uh, it comes down. So let's come from here and come down to the lower chin. Make sure that that contour, uh, yes, it is sort of like drawing lip line, <laughs> Wendy. Hey, Gloria, how you doing? Good to see you. Gloria's in the house, so great. So how you been, Gloria? And so you see, I'm just coming down like that, and then we're going to come back up. Oh, great. I'm really glad you love it. It's my favorite airbrush in the world right now. I do love the Slim, the 2020 Slim, the Sotar, but it just seems like the Patriot I can't put down. Ah, so great. That is so fantastic, Gloria. Now right here we have her nose. And now always pay attention to what's happening in your projection. It did. Did you go ahead and change that uh, high roller trigger for the smaller trigger? Because I know that high roller trigger was very, very hard to get used to. Uh, that's why I ultimately changed it out. So this is a just an, an anonymous figure uh, that I found, and I just love the image of her. She's 
it just felt like it was like one of those 19th century paintings even though it's a modern day photo so I really wanted to get that feeling of a fine art piece you know something from like France you know uh, in the 1800s now her nose is very interesting but it's a caveat you have to be real careful you could mess it I could mess it up very easily so I have to really really uh, be careful about that is the sound okay guys the sound and the picture quality everything on par today Uh, I'm going to have this picture as a download on my website, paintingglyphs.com. And uh, so if you want to, you know, work on this, uh, I'll have that uh, picture for you guys probably tomorrow, if not tonight. And then... We just gotta work on this this shadow plane. Oh, fantastic! So thank you so much, and you know that really helps. Thanks, Gloria, Wendy, and Mike. I really appreciate that. Yes. So we just want to make sure that you know I sound good, no distortions or anything. I'll also keep this video up on YouTube for a while, so you guys could watch the. You know, if you, you know, have to go home early, I mean, uh, not go home early, but log out early, you can go watch it in its entirety on the, my YouTube channel, which is cool. See, this nose is very tricky. Uh, I think I have to really pay attention that I don't uh, don't miss the boat here. Again, see this nostril here. Uh, if I actually go to the image, you see, if I blow this up, the nostril is really being, the form of the nostril is not being described by the nostril, but by the cheek behind it. You see that shadow? That area right there is really giving this shape here. Otherwise, you wouldn't see it. So that's, those are things that are very important to realize. That it's not always the shape itself that is giving, it's not always the object itself that is giving the shape, but uh, actually the... Uh, the surrounding elements is what are responsible for giving that shape. And at this stage, it's so important not to go too fast. You know, you want to make sure that everything is really, you're really sure about everything before you start going in with, with ink. So I love this piece because it's really going to be a beautiful setup for the white, uh, for the white uh, illustration paints uh, by Drew Blair to go ahead and uh, map out the, the light areas and then go in with the ink and then at the end pastel and the dark accents so like a game of chess this is really a good game plan to have is to find an image that basically is perfect for the technique that you're going to do now there are some harsh lines here when you do work on everything so you want to make sure that you are really looking to beautify those lines
go and get the shape of the ear, of her ear. And then, of course, clean up areas while you go because you want to set up for the white. And you don't want to have too many excess pencil lines. So you'll be cleaning up as you go. Over here, we have her eyelid. So we want to make sure. Let's go ahead and blow that up. And you can see how unrefined everything is. See how unrefined that eye is. It's pretty much a mess. So that's why the, this drawing stage is crucial. Not important, but absolutely crucial. So let's move on over to the other eye. <coughs> and we just want to really refine this eyelid here. Remember the eyeball, we want to make sure that we get the negative shapes just as important. You see this little triangle here? You want to make sure you get that, that right shape. And also look at this angle, how it goes down, the lower eyelid. See how it just goes down? I would say probably between 9 and 8 o'clock. And if you do that and then have it go up again over here. So let's go ahead and translate that to our drawing. So let me just move my reference over here. So remember we wanted that negative shape over here. And remember that angle as it comes down here. So those are things you want to look at. And then the angle changes and then goes up like that. So that's the negative shape you want to really pay attention to. Now all this is going to be very much in shadow, but still we want to have a grasp on this, a grasp on it. over here on the forehead. Let's look at the forehead really quick. Now you see on the forehead we have some shapes here that you definitely want to... Hey Heath, how's it going? Good to see you man. So right here we want to make sure that we sort of iterate this this uh, shape here. And come out over there like that. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you draw this out yourself, it becomes more yours. And I really feel that way, that the drawing, uh, the painting becomes more yours because the, the actual drawing is done by your hand. Even though your method of transferring, whether it be, you know, just, you know, graphite transfer method or projection, grid method, no matter how you do it, as long as you go ahead and refine that drawing, the painting is going to be more yours from the very beginning. And that's something I truly feel. It is pouring here in New Jersey. So, so how's everything uh, in your neck of the woods, guys? What's the weather like?
Okay, so I'm almost ready for going in with the paint. Uh, I think it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm happy with it so far. And then I could go ahead and make some adjustments as I go in with the ink. So I have the hairline pretty much done. Okay, so so do you guys see how crucial it is to get this part right? This is so important and it's just going to pay dividends in your artwork. So, you know, I'm doing a live stream right now, but I would probably maybe even do an hour even more of just refining the drawing here. That's just my preference. Oh, yeah, that's right. It is crazy amount of rain. So he's you have rain. Oh, rain and snow. Oh, boy. Now, Heath, you're in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? And Mike S. says, uh, high winds and rain here. Love the sound of wind and a snowstorm in the winter. Yeah, that is so it, it is beautiful, Mike. I agree there. So now I'm pretty much happy with the way the drawing is. So the crucial thing now is to lighten up everything. So this is important. So I feel good that I actually took time to make sure that my drawing is good. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna be much harder trying to fix this down the line. And I'm just tapping. When do you guys are having a drought, huh? Hey, Fernando, como estas, amigo mio? Estoy muy contento a verte, señor. So right now I'm pretty much happy with it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm not sure what airbrush I'm gonna use, but what we need to do is to go in with the white at this point. So this is a very important aspect, but with this one even more so because we have so many light areas. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you my new product. I'll be right back. I am back and this time I'm going to take out my 2020 regular SOTAR 2020 here and what I did was I mixed uh, my white mixtures for this technique so it's a mixture of the Drew Blair's uh, illustration white and then with a mixture of water and the medium to have the perfect uh, the actual perfect solution to work on this technique. So I thought that was a pretty cool idea and makes life easier for those who don't want to worry about whether or not they're going to get the right mixture when they do the white. And I can see how, you know, many people would have a concern with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fire this airbrush up. And of course I have the air regulator on here. And I also want to show you something very quickly that I like using.
So the color line paper comes in large sheets and you have to cut it to get your eight and a half by 11, which I use. One of the things you have these spares, don't throw away the spares, cut them into little squares such as this or rectangles, whatever you have. And you can go ahead and test out your mixture and make sure on the exact same surface that you're working on. This way you know exactly what's going to happen. So here's the white and I'm going to offer this on my website, which is diluted with the, uh, with the reducer in water to the perfect viscosity. And it comes with the eyedropper. This is, I believe, a half an ounce. Let's see. Okay. And it's also a good way to test out your airbrush, make sure everything. But let me show you how simple it is to just go ahead, just shake it. How simple it is to go ahead and put in the white. You know, you don't got to worry about skim milk. I do it all for you. Let's go ahead and put that in. There we go. We don't have to overdo it. We'll just put a little bit in. It's neat. No mess. And you're starting to paint right now. So I think that's really cool. So, And I think that's really good for those who need a little help. So you see right now on this paper, I can actually see what the white is doing. It's perfect. So I'm not sure if I'm going to offer this separately or as part of the ink mixtures. I am not sure yet. Rick says that he just did a mural on wood boat, a wood boat transom sealed in with West system epoxy sanded at 400 grit. What a great medium to work on. That sounds really great, Rick. So this is a, uh, a mural, huh? Oh my God. That's, Really interesting or a muriel. Now what's a muriel? So that's interesting. Okay, so I know that it's working and it's the viscosity that I want. So now we have our artwork and now it's time for me to go ahead and lay in the white. Okay, here goes. Remember, you want it to catch up to the surface. So even though you don't see it yet, you got to give it a second to dry. And when you have the squares, you can test it out and see exactly what it's doing. No more, no more guesswork. So when you also, when you purchase my white mixture, it's no guesswork on what the viscosity is. So it's a whole painting system. See that? I can, you can see it just starting right there. So that sounds really great, Rick. I'd love to see what you did when you get a chance. Uh, post it on Inklinger's website, Inklinger's YouTube. No, Inklinger's Facebook group. Sorry about that. And you see how I'm letting it catch up to the surface, guys, which is very important. Now, this is not ink. This is white acrylic, so you want to make sure that you watch for tip dry. Even though you don't see it, let it dry. And it'll show up. And you want to be very, you want to be careful. You want to pay attention to what's happening. And as you go, if you see some lines that show up a little darker, you could, you know, as long as it's dry, you can just lightly erase some of those lines so they don't come back to haunt you. You're going to need those lines, but when you erase it, it's going to actually show the paper underneath. So it sort of replaces uh, the need for those pencil lines. We can go even more intense with the white. And 
He says, uh, Mike says, I hope it was out of water. Oh, what was that? Okay. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, in the boat. That is pretty funny, Mike. Yeah. So remember, you don't want to get overzealous. You just want to very lightly, maybe about three, four inches from the surface. You want to establish the large white areas, but let it catch up. That's true, a painter in a, a diving suit, that would be something. I don't think I've seen that. Let that paint catch up, okay? You don't wanna get too uh, too dark, I mean too heavy, let it catch up because uh, it might just need a little bit of the white paint, not too much. See how I'm just working it slowly? Now we're going to work down of course and we also have you know, here on her her back and her shoulder and her upper arm. So we're going to go ahead and do that as well. So right here I see a, a blast of light. And let's put that in. Remember, we're letting the paint catch up to the surface. So important. Because if you know you don't see it, it's going to dry and the white's going to show up much more. There we go. Now, this is interesting. Just on the corner here of her Cupid's bow or fulcrum. See that? So I'm just going to put in that little blast of light there. Let that paint catch up to the surface. Even though you don't see it, it's going to show up. So that's very important. So you'll hear my voice over and over because I'm going to repeat it. When you guys do it, you're going to hear my voice saying, let it catch up to the surface. Here in your ear, we have a blast of light. And what we're sort of doing, we're, we're doing it sculpturally. So you're painting sculpturally. Like let's say you have clay and we're just making the large shapes, but make it, the lights come forward. And that's what we're doing here. Now doing this is really, really gonna go so far in, in creating uh, the image looking three-dimensional. And you know, we have this, right guys? How important this is? Let's go ahead and always just test this out and see it. You know, this is so crucial because if you'll say you're working on, you know, this and then you're testing the white here, well, that's not gonna be indicative to what's happening. So when you're using the exact surface as your tester, you're, you're really, really testing it correctly. So that, to me has really proven to be a very important technical uh, advantage for me lately. You know, a new technique that I think really helps. And you see how I'm bringing that light. Mike says, Tim, I thought you were into white uh, white paint, but you switch back to ink now. Actually, no, this is uh, Drew Blair's uh, uh, was a 50-50 uh, 
illustration white and what I did was I reduced it to the perfect uh, viscosity for this technique which is the water and the uh, reducer so that is going to be available on my website so this way you know when someone's trying out they're not going to worry about whether it's skim milk half and half or whatever the viscosity is going to be perfectly calibrated for you guys Now the reason why uh, I am, yes, exactly, it's very erasable. Now, I love the ink. Remember we used to use the PH Martin's India ink, but it's not even close under several clinical, uh, not clinical, but several really rigid, rig, rigid tests uh, or rigorous testing found that this erases 150 times better. Know what's best for the technique, right, guys? Okay, so right here we have her nose, and there is some light here. So, a blast of light right there. I want to make sure I hit that. Yes, this is still that illustration white. Yeah, after like I think like a month and a half ago or so, I really abandoned the white India ink because it, not that it wasn't a good product, it wasn't the best. And if something I find something better than this, it's going to replace this too. That I'm going to read. I always look for something better. Always doing testing. Everything. Now, so far, I stored this for a week with no adverse side effects. And that's something that I'm going to be testing. Uh, but it's airtight, so I don't see any problem. The only thing that might problem, you might have to clean out the eyedropper. That's the only thing that might happen. So I don't see, you know, as long... Now, this... I store these in amber glass, amber glass, and so there's less evaporation, and it's totally airtight. Those two things will make it last a long time. Okay, so what we can do now and see now in her eyes there really isn't anything happening because her eyes are pretty much in shadow so even though I want to do that my inclination is to do that I'm gonna hold off because it's what I see that's more important than what I think is there Now for little white areas such as here in the lips, I'm not going to go in with this because I think white pastel is better for the job down the line because it's such a small area. Same thing with the hair. You know, so we have some light areas of the hair, but I think what's best, white pastel, would be a better decision in smaller areas. So definitely uh, make sure that even though it might be tempted to go in with the uh, white illustration paint in the little areas, I think it's best to hold off. let that paint catch up to the surface but you can see we're getting really you know we're really starting to get some really nice nice variation here she's already starting to look three-dimensional 
So Mike says you only ask because they say it only has like 48 hours after mixing with reducer. Maybe that's the regular Kratex and uh, Wicked. Well, we'll definitely find out, you know, what's going to happen with this with trial and error. Uh, but uh, so far, so good. And it's been, you know, it's been about a week, I'd say. So, you know, I think it, I think it will work. I mean, so far it looks really good. I think maybe because it's airborne, I don't think people are, are taking them out and making them airtight, you know, like I am. So, I'm sure if there's no air, it slows down any kind of uh, change. But, you know, that's a good point, Mike, so we definitely will see. And we're going to go ahead and work on the neck and her neck and bring it down and let's do that here it's a good time for the freehand shield even though we're going to uh, really darken this down the line when we put in the background so I'm going to show you guys something very interesting using uh, the contact paper that you get at Walmart as Frisket so that's going to be fun Frisket with paper so that's going to be very interesting. Let the white catch up. Now my inclination is to go ahead and really get in there, right? And, you know, uh, overload this, but let it catch up to the surface. So important. Letitia, how you doing? Yes, I do. <laughs> I have no likes, that's true. Isn't that horrible? Everyone, go ahead and hit that like button for me so I don't feel sad. <laughs> And you can see there's a lot of unevenness there. So I'm going to let that dry and go in there. Uh, so Mike S. says, do I draw all my images or reject some? And is your projector digital or old school light bulb? Actually, uh, this is, I, I do a combination of drawing and projecting depending on what I'm doing. Uh, even when I project, it's really basically for measurement. And then I end up drawing it over again, as you see today. So... Yeah, it is a combination, because if you go ahead and project, it's going to be a very weak drawing, no matter who you are. So you really got to go over it uh, again, you know, like I do. So you see, I'm just evening out that white here. <laughs> so you see, right now, even though this looks pretty crude, it is a really good head start. We are mapping everything out. Remember, you get there much quicker with a map, right? So that's what we're doing. We're mapping this out. 
And oh, the projector is a it's a VGA projector. The company is ViewSonic. I know they're all uh, HDMI now, but that's an older one. I got it on sale for like two hundred and seventy dollars. Definitely go digital projector when you can, Mike. I used to use the one that you use. But yet there are some limitations that I find, such as you have to have a completely dark room, so it's almost impossible to project during the day. And uh, the light bulb isn't as bright and powerful as a digital projector. Yes, the I remember Wendy, Wendy, when you purchased that. Wendy's first projector that she got on eBay was defective. Is that true, if I recall correctly, Wendy? And so what we're going to do is we're just going to extend this light down here. And I increase my distance when I want it to be fading more. Remember, distance. So here's the big three. Viscosity. Uh... PSI and distance. Every stroke should have those three elements that you thought of. You know, you, you thought out. If you're not thinking out any of those three influ influences, you're going to have a big, big problem. HDMI, not sure if it's totally digital. Yes, if it's HDMI, it's totally digital. That's for sure. Uh, that's right, it didn't work. And, oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> okay, so this is where we're at right now. So you see how everything's mapped out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see where I could actually fade some of these lights in here. So if you're looking at this next to the reference, you can see that it's pretty good in the sense of what we want, right? You got the blast of light here, and yes, the super prism, uh, two 250 watt bulbs, yes, uh, that's pretty good. If you can get your hand on a digital one, Mike, you're going to love it because you can actually project during the day. That's how bright it is. But they can be pricey. That's the problem. As Wendy has just said. Yes, definitely. And so you see, so we have the white and then we could erase. Because remember, when we were working with the India ink, uh, the white India ink, this was an impossibility. So what I'm doing now that I have the white loaded, I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything here. You don't want to miss any spots. So here you see the white sort of cuts in. Just a little bit right here. Remember, let it catch up to the surface. She has teeth showing, so we don't want to go too crazy. Uh, I would look for any kind of closeouts or sales or open boxes. Uh, that's a good idea if you can do that. And uh, that's where you'll find a lot of great value. And uh, also refurbish is good because they guarantee it if it doesn't work. And you might get a really good price there too, Mike. I really like the white, the way we did this here. It's nice and beautiful. Now let's go ahead and see where we can maybe just load some of the white where there's more, uh, it's more, how do you say, directly facing the light. And we're going to actually sort of double load the white there. So even in the beginning, we haven't even done any shading right now. We are already establishing some three-dimensional 
three dimensional qualities to this. We'll make sure, even when you're putting in the extra, make sure that you are, you know, going for these little higher light areas that you are letting the paint catch up to the surface. Mike S. says, uh, we talked about that last week, but causes a problem, the ones from China. Yeah, those are, be careful with them. Uh, eBay might be a good solution. Wendy got a great deal. Uh, Mike S. says, Tim, you ever get a sample of that paper I sent a link to? No, just not yet, but I'm definitely going to try it because that does sound very interesting, Mike. So uh, I definitely got to make that phone call. And thank you for sending that link, that's for sure. So we have some beautiful light here. And now we can fade that out, increasing the distance, and we can fade it. See that when we increase the distance? Uh, Willie says, Tim, how long have you been doing Wednesday night live streams? It seems like it's been two or three years, but uh, it can't be. No. It does seem that way sometimes. I have been doing Wednesday night live streams since 2017, but then I stopped for a while, and then I really started them in earnest. Probably May of 2018, and that's when I really did it. So I would say we're getting close to a year and a half of uh, doing the live streams pretty regularly. Maybe well, maybe close to two years. Yeah, so uh, definitely. Uh, I try to be as consistent as possible because you guys, you know, you guys take time out of your week. And I definitely want to be here for you guys. So it's been really fantastic. I really enjoy it. Uh, meeting you guys and hanging out and growing as artists together. Because you guys teach me as much as I teach you, it seems. load that white here see that we're just going to really do a blast of white there now this is interesting i'm doing a little bit of a different approach um doing more of the white uh because i think uh you know you can might be able to get a, a stronger effect but we'll see but we'll test it together so i'm just just going to Yes, an anniversary party. That would be very cool, Willie. Yeah, that, that's a fantastic idea. I actually used to do just videos, and but then the live stream seemed to be more successful. More successful in helping you guys and also, you know, you know, as far as watch time and everything. So that's why, and I also wanted to concentrate on live streams, Willie, because I think a lot of people were not doing them right. And at first I wasn't doing them right either, but that was a challenge to really step up my game in the live streams, right? And that's important. Yes, an excuse for cake is always fantastic, Wendy, that's for sure. And you can see I'm getting a little more detailed with the white this time than you guys see me in the other projects. But I like it, right? What do you guys think? It's sort of, uh, it's bold. We're, we're sort of progressing as artists together with this technique. So, you know, you see how we have the blast of light in certain areas. And I think that's really giving us a head start in this, uh, in this portrait here. Where else do I see a blast of light? I would say here in her ear. 
and see how we can sort of create that ear, making it look more round even before we even come in with any kind of ink or shading. And that's what I look for in drawing, you know, when I draw, I think you could make something look totally round with just lines. Now, of course, shading always helps, but if you can have that element at this stage, it's only going to help our painting down the line. Now, uh, we can go ahead before we come in with the, you know, start doing the ink. We don't want to be premature with that. So how can we actually create some volume by number one, erasing these pencil lines, but also using the paper underneath to create some of these beautiful shadows. Of course, this is the Mono Eraser, and as always in the description are the links, and you can go ahead and purchase any of the products that I'm using here, and those are affiliate links, and I get a small, teeny tiny, baby little uh, commission with that, but the prices are the same to you, and it helps out the channel. I usually end up with maybe $23, I would say, every two months. Uh, with what you guys purchase, but you know, that's a little thing that really helps. So if you're going to purchase, uh, go ahead and use those links if you can. That would be much appreciated. My guess says, too bad we are all spread so far apart and kind of stuck. Well, at least I'm stuck, Mike says. Would be cool to have a get-together. It really would, you know? You know, I was thinking maybe one day we could set up a trip to Badger. I talk to Ken all the time, and he would love that. Uh, oh, Rick, thank you so much. Rick says it already has uh, boldness and, dy dy and it's dynamic already. I appreciate that. And uh, so that's what we're doing, right? We are trying to create subtlety, yet still have some volume right off the bat, even before we come in with the ink. So we are really sort of stepping up our preliminary work and you see I mean we really have a very good start and my guest says Wendy could bring 15 cakes to the bar <laughs> that's for sure Wendy that would be great and I like the mono eraser because it's still soft and it is uh, you know it's not going to dig into the paint you know, even though this is the best paper in the world for this technique so far, it uh, you still want to make sure you treat it with care. I'm a good distance away to soften up some of these edges. Remember, edge work is so important. Uh, so remember, you know, as you see here, if I want to do a soft progression, I'm going to be way out here. And I'm going to, it's at maybe about five inches. And you see how soft that is, which is really fantastic uh, to get that uh, softness. So it's really not, you know, you don't, you want to set a really good uh, PSI and then dial it down with your Mac valve. But as far as going from hard to soft, a lot of that could be distance, remember. So these are the big three viscosity, how thin you uh, thin out your paint or your ink, and then your, your PSI, and then your distance. Those three things are going to be a lot for control. So always remember, do tests, practice, and get used to, you know, how the airbrush reacts to all those different elements uh, in your painting. You know, when is uh, distance important, you know? Uh, when is it important to be close as opposed to uh, far away? I mean, what kind of what kind of reaction does the paint and the surface uh, give you from different distances, different viscosities, uh, dilutions, that sort of thing? 
Now, we're always going to be tempted to do more, right? So we have to always, 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 you know, don't go too much, you know? Uh, just... There we go. So I'm liking it. Let's get rid of some of these pencil lines. See, we can get rid of the pencil lines there and just leave the essence. Uh-oh, looks like I lost you guys on chat. Let me get you back. Chat here. I just have to reauthorize there, guys. You know, it is past 1040, right? It's 1030, so that's what happened. So give me one moment, guys. Let me get you back. So it's a good time for you guys to get some water, you know, stretch, that sort of thing. I am going to put in my password. Go. Okay. Perfect. Okay, there you are. So let's see uh, what we have, who we have here. So, uh, yes, carrot cake. That's right. And... So that's exciting. So definitely that's that's Letitia's favorite. So Letitia's birthday's on Friday. So she loves carrot cake, guys. Uh, let's see. Oh, Letitia says that I make delicious carrot cake. I do. I am very good at that. <laughs> Not so much with this with the with the application of the icing, but I'm getting better. Oh, I see. Yes, you've got to definitely take care of your mom. That's for sure. Um, Willie says he might just drive to Texas just for some cake. Maybe he can pick, uh, pick some up on the way. <laughs> Very cool. And what I'm going to do is... Uh, continue erasing some of these areas well remember we were saying with the lips that we're able to go ahead and relate erase the pencil line so we just have the essence the negative space there so we don't even have any pencil lines so what a great way you know no pencil lines we have the white mapped out so it's just a great way to start Okay, so here we can, let's go ahead. It looks like I missed the lower eye lid of the eye on the left. So let's go ahead and blow that up. There we go. All right, so this is very important. So I have my reference. You can't see it. With, the great thing is with Pure Ref, I can blow up the reference, have it side by side, right to my drawing, and really really get the information perfectly so when you guys get a chance pure ref is really good and there are several uh youtube um youtube videos that really explain it which is really fantastic it's really big in the digital art world digital painting and i do that uh on my own digital um not quite there yet as far as uh teaching it but getting there Look how crude that looks, guys, especially when you blow it up. But it will be refined, that I promise. Especially when we come in with the ink. make sure that we got this down here and like I said it's you know it's really important to do that one second rule where you draw for one second then uh, look for one second and continue that always have that equal time of looking at your subject while you're you're painting 
My guest says he never thought about how many different erasers there are for different things on paintings like these. Oh, very welcome. Yes, uh, they're so important. And pencils too, yes. Uh, let's see. Yes, Willie says he knows more than he can count. I'll tell you. I'm always at the art store. If I see a new eraser, I pick it up. This one's really great. Uh, this is one of my new favorite. It's by Mono, Tombow, of course. It's called the Knock 3.8. It's really fantastic. It has a really soft uh, tip. It erases well, but softly, which I really love. Not too harsh. It's good to do this for the larger areas and then Tombow Zero for the smaller areas. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So let's continue doing some subtle erasing here and there. Where else do we see some erasing? Okay, here we go. Maybe we can use this because it's a larger area. Oh, let's go down. We'll go back. There we go. Yes, right here we can erase this this very subtle shadow shape right here. By erasing the white is another way of of, of getting some detail, you know. Uh, Mike says, well, it's little things that one never thinks about of until you see it or use it or been told about. It's so true. Uh, you know, that's one of the things of, you know, studying with someone, you know, you know, it's good to be self-taught, but it's good to have somebody to sort of, you know, help you in the beginning to circumvent a lot of mistakes. That's why if you guys ever have the opportunity to take my Skype class, I highly recommend it. Because it's 18 hours of instruction, one-on-one -on -one while you're painting, and I'm painting the same subject, and I'll tell you, you can ask the questions while you're painting, and that's fantastic. Not only what you're painting, you know, how you're doing it, but also how I'm doing it, so you can see. Uh, yes, Wendy, uh, Letitia is much younger than me, and she looks much younger than me as well. Right, Wendy? I mean, right, Letitia? And Wendy looks much younger than me. I don't know how you ladies do it, but. And so, so right now you see I'm, I'm using the erasability of Drew Blair's illustration white and the dilution that I did to really sort of sculpt here, sculpt some of these these very subtle shadow shapes. So now when I come in with ink, I'm ready to go. <laughs> that's, yes, that's true, Wendy. Now, where else can I go ahead? Okay, so here's some areas in the neck that I think we could sort of sort of get with the eraser, which is really good. Get some of those shadow shapes just by erasing the white. Will it reveal the paper underneath and give us a real uh, sculptural feeling? Using the paper as a value is really exciting. So Wendy says her best friend is a few years older and he, she reminds her uh, between birthdays constantly. <laughs> That's funny. And Mike says, Tim, is there a time limit on erasing? There is. Uh, you know, you want to do it as soon as possible. Uh, it does uh, sort of dry and adhere to the surface a little bit better with time. So. 
You definitely want to do the erasing with the white as soon as possible. It definitely changes after one hour. And that was, you know, Drew told me that. And so that's something you definitely want to pay attention to. Uh, it's going to stay erasable even like later down the line, but not as much, you know, within an hour. It's going to be very erasable, if that's a word, erasable. Yes, that's what Wendy said, 12, 24 hours, that's correct. Uh, but it, it does erase still, uh, but not as well. And yeah, it does start to change. I find even after an hour, it starts to change a little bit. It's not as uh, pliable, so to speak. Remember, week one is just, week one is always mapping it out. Uh, well, that's, I would say an hour is when you really want to erase it, Wendy, for me. Uh, even, you know, the, the quicker I do it, I always try to do it as fast as possible because this way it hasn't really, uh, the molecules haven't really attached to the pores of the paper yet. So that alone is a good reason to uh, try and get it erased as quick as possible. The longer you wait, the more those, that connection is going to happen. But you're right, 24 hours is definitely, I believe what, uh, what Drew said, 24 hours and then within the hour as well. Oh, Willie, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, you know, I hope you have a great night and I hope to see you next week and I uh, really appreciate your time, Willie. So you see how I can begin sort of the three-dimensional qualities of her cheek area and I can start to do that by erasing that white same thing here now over here we could actually get rid of the pencil lines that we had for this nostril here and remember the cheek is what really was describing that nostril, not the nostril itself. Uh, let's see, uh, but not too fast, right? Because I have done that too, and it's not good either. Yes, anything, whether it's ink or you want, or the 2020, uh, the 5050 white, is you don't want it to be wet because then you just you're going to damage the surface. So that's going to be really bad. Uh, my guess says, Tim, it takes you a week to map out your images, or is that just time you give yourself to done in a relaxed time? Uh, well, I mean, the first week is just like the first three hours. I meant that, uh, Willie. So, yeah, I would say, you know, the first day is really doing something like this, mapping it out. And uh, so that's, that's important. And uh, so if I'm doing it, not live stream I'm gonna like you say I'll be a little more a little more deliberate and that would make life a little easier for me so I want to make sure that I came out uh, enough with that nostril so let's go ahead and with our freehand shield we're just gonna bow out her nostril just a little bit more let's see I don't want that. One of the proclivity I have is I make nostrils too small and eyebrows too small. So whenever you see that you have a proclivity or a propensity to do something, you definitely want to make sure that you compensate for that. So I always compensate that way. I'm almost done with the white and then we're probably going to do the last half hour with the light mixture. Okay. 
And this 2020 slant, this uh, 2020 regular SOTAR really does this this particular job perfectly. This is the perfect airbrush for the white. see how once we do here we can actually increase some of this beautiful uh, white over here. We'll just deepen this white a little bit. And don't rush it. Never rush the process. Right? You don't want to ever rush the process. Now, we just might say, okay, maybe we need to uh, go a little less with the white next time, but this is a good experiment for us to see how we're going to do this. Okay, so we're going to take our 2020 and we are just going to put this aside. And now what we can do is load up our Extreme Patriot Arrow with the modified trigger. I put a regular SOTAR trigger on there because I didn't like the high roller at all. And so let's go ahead and we'll change our angle here. Okay, so let's find, now where in the world did I put my airbrush? Here it is, okay. Now let's go ahead and attach it to another hose. So let's, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my light mixture Always put your artwork far away from handling any kind of ink or paint. You might have splatters, you never know. Even though this is the most controlled of uh, loading inks and paint and everything like that. So it's really great. You don't have to deal with any kind of dilutions or uh, any kind of cups. It's just from from here right into your airbrush which is pretty cool okay there we go Heat says great to watch the sketching process Tim oh thank you so much for coming by Heath it's uh, fantastic and I really appreciate you coming by uh, Mike says my 2020 slim seems to work better than my new 2020 regular but maybe it's because I have been away from my painting for a month or so uh, the 2020 Slim is a little better, I would say, in detail work. Uh, and that's from me working. Uh, the, I would say the 2020, you can do detailed work, but it's much more difficult to do detailed work with the regular 2020. That's why for this technique with the white, it was perfect, you know. So take care of yourself there, Heath. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to work on her eyes. That's what I usually start with. So let's go ahead and now we have the light mixture. The light mixture is your sketching, sketching mixture, right? So whatever we do with this eye, we're going to go ahead and do with the other eye. We're going to paint them together. If you complete one eye and then you go ahead and complete the second eye, the second eye is going to be better because you practice. So the second eye is going to have more practice. See, so that's uh, both have fine needles, yes, but 
The Sotar Slim, the needle sticks out a little bit more if you notice. You take a look at those two and you'll see that the Sotar Slim actually sticks out further, allowing you to have better detail. So I'm not going to go any further. We're going to go and head to the other eye. Her other eye. And so you see how I go from one to another. Uh, Mike S. says, Wendy, did you ever get your inline air adjustment valve problem figured out? Okay, that's cool. But look at the beautiful detail I'm able to get with this Extreme Patriot Arrow. This is SOTAR detail, guys. Not SOTAR. This is Micron detail here. Yeah, check that out. You'll definitely see. Remember, increase your distance to get more of a soft blend. So you see it blends out, so I'm just going to increase the distance of the airbrush to get a softer blend there. And then now, since I pretty much, whatever I did here, I did there, now we can go ahead and start painting those eye sockets to really uh, get a feeling of those eyes being you know, part of her, part of her head, not by themselves, not their own entity, but part of a larger group of features. Remember, what we do on this side, we're going to do on this side here. And remember, you don't want to go too dark, so the light mixture is good, but if you're too close to the subject or too close to the paper and your distance is like really, really not far enough, you're still going to go too dark. So distance is very important. That's why I go with, uh, this. even though I go viscosity, PSI, and distance, I think uh, in the beginning distance is crucial. Actually, all those three elements are really crucial, guys. And the one second rule. So those are three things really to look at. So Mike says, I hear a lot about people online talking about polishing their needles. Do you polish yours? And what do you think about it? I haven't done that. I, you know, a lot of really smart people do it. Uh, Gaston, he, he's part of Ink Flingers. And he does it and... Uh, so if he likes it, I definitely trust it. I just never did it yet. I don't have a Dremel tool, so uh, I do sometimes uh, rub it along, run, run the tip along sandpaper, and I tested that out. So I don't think it made much of a distance difference. But what they do is they uh, use a Dremel tool, I think. But don't quote me on that. I never did it, but. I think a lot of guys really swear by it, so I definitely believe them. I just haven't been able to have the opportunity to test it out.
One of the things, you know, when you airbrush eight hours a day, you really start knowing different things about the airbrush. You just feel when you pull back the trigger a little bit of a, I don't know, a stickiness. It's really hardly noticeable. And what I do is I just pull back the needle a little bit and put it back. And then that stickiness is gone. So that's something. You'll feel it. So I want you to look for that when you're airbrushing. And that usually happens when you're airbrushing uh, for a long time. Uh, but this is the first time I'm using this airbrush today. So it usually doesn't happen in the early going, but this time it did. Uh, now, uh, Wendy says she did before, she found out you could do it. Oh, cool. So you went ahead and polished your needle, that's me. Everything's gonna look really dark, especially in the eyes. Don't worry about it because it isn't dark. It's just that everything else is so light around that everything appears dark. Now remember, what we do up here, we sort of bring it down, and that's what we're going to do. But let's continue uh, with this shadow shape here of her eye socket. And of course that's going to deepen up as you go. Mike says he did some of his by spinning his needle in 1500 to 2000 grit with fine sandpaper and that helps a lot. I'm going to try that. As you can see I'm really starting to get the three-dimensional qualities of but this is only the very beginning sort of a sketch right let's say you're on in a train and you're sketching somebody you're not going to get really dark you're going to keep it light and you're just going to look for those sh larger shapes and work from there And you see how just by starting to do the side plane of this nose, going into her eye socket, we're starting to really, that white is really paying dividends, right guys? It's really, really helping us. And uh, so Mike says I can pick up a Dremel from Harbor Freight for super cheap and wow, so only 20 bucks. That's something I'm definitely going to look into. Thanks for that, Mike. I appreciate that. That's great advice. Okay, so you see how we are working here. So we definitely have to continue down, right? We can't just stay in one area. So let's work on the eye socket of this eye. Let's fade this out here. Such beautiful smooth gradations, almost feels like she's made out of porcelain right now. I mean that's not the way the finish is, but I sort of love that effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on her lips here. Real slowly. Distance is important guys.
The one second rule is really going to pay off here. So you really want to look for a second, paint for a second, or just that ratio. Look for two seconds, paint for a second. Go this way, go that way, back and forth. And that's going to really help you to get an accurate, accurate drawing. So you see how soft we are right now. And we're going to come in with some hard edges, but the softness is really going to be beautiful in the early stages here. Now, what Mike says, he spun them into sandpaper between his fingers. Wet and dry sandpaper is what I use. Wow, that's fantastic. That's a great idea. See how soft this is here and then immediately comes remember the bottom lip is described more by the cast shadow of the bottom lip onto the chin than the actual bottom lip itself you know I'm going soft I say I'm probably about two inches from the surface let me show you with this angle here so I'm probably about two inches from the surface And if I want to go darker, I just decrease the distance. And if I want fades, I just make sure that I increase the distance as I'm going further out. And then we're going to go ahead and have the cast shadow from the slip. And then we're going to connect it up to the side plane of her cheek. This is a good time because we have a uh, contrast between the background and between the background and the side plane. The side plane is, is darker, so we want to make sure that we use our freehand shield to keep that hard edge that's a hard edge that you need to establish right off the bat and let's bring this down here this seems very dark but once we come in with the dark of the hair that's really going to lighten up quite significantly Mike says he loves how I could make the white look good at the start of the painting almost don't need other colors with my talent. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. You know, that's very kind of you. And uh, it's just great hanging out with all you talented guys and girls. So I appreciate that so much. So you see how we have this area right now all of a sudden is lighting up lightening up because of the dark that we're putting here so so now we're establishing this dark value right here we can go ahead and uh, use our eraser the very softest eraser which is our kneaded eraser so I'm just going to tap and get rid of that pencil line we don't want that to come back to haunt us guys uh, the illustrator paint can be thinned down like 200%. How far down would you uh, thin it otherwise? Percentage-wise, I would say probably maybe 1 to 1 maybe or 2 to 1 at most. Uh, I don't thin it out that much. So I hope that helps. But I also do a combination of some water in there as well, just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you definitely want it to be a, uh, a nice thin mixture that is not going to be too heavy. And you'll be able to layer it, you know. Let me go ahead and soften up this transition tone from this shadow plane here. It has a transition tone, and we're going to hit that right here.
The one second rule is really going to help us a lot. Uh, and subtlety is very important. That's why I picked this portrait because it's so subtle. Just going to get rid of some of those pencil lines. Make it look like I never even used a pencil, even though you guys witnessed me using it. Uh, one to one is 100%. That's cool. Yeah, I would say one to one. Maybe between one to one and two to one would probably be your best. Uh, so, you know, meaning, you know, maybe one or two parts of your, either your, your reducer and a little bit of water included in that. Uh, that would probably be a good bet. But definitely test it out. But definitely with this paper really helps. You change the paper, you definitely change the effect. So uh, definitely get your hands on some of this color line paper. If you, the De La Rani is good, don't get me wrong, but this is better. Also, the bottom lip is described by the value of the area under the chin here into the cheek. See that? That really helps to describe the form. Yes, Mike says that he acts because it seems like it works like a transparent. That's what's great about this is that the white is like a transparent because when it's anything, even white thinned down can be a transparent. Uh, even though it's the most opaque of colors, you're right. It is a transparent because how much we thin it down and how we use it. We use it like a transparent because as we build up those very thin layers, it gets darker and opaque. Once you put it down, it doesn't get darker as you layer it, but transparent screw. So that's very astute, you might. Uh, yes, it is like a transparent. Because this whole technique is working with transparent, right? So it, it really is. Uh, you're quite right. So as you see, we're going to be working down. That's what we want to do. But let's go ahead and establish. I kind of forgot about her other eyebrow, and that was nice. So let's go ahead and paint her other eyebrow in. Very loosely at first. We're going to get more detail down the line. But these are short dagger strokes, as you see here. Mike says that he's been using the inside of Cheerio boxes because it's gray in color and heavyweight. Hey, if that works, definitely. And it's good for practice, right? Uh, the only thing is, uh, I'm not sure, uh, it's great for practice, and that's fantastic. But for your you know, stuff you want to save, I'm not sure it's going to be acid-free, so it might change in color down the line. But yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, it might even be acid-free, we don't know, so, hey, whatever works, right? That's what I say. So just establishing the other eyebrow there and not going too crazy really helps. Now what we can do is let's go ahead and work on you know bringing everything down so let's see if we could just go ahead and use our freehand shield here and we're going to start establishing the tone of our neck. 
and you can crawl along the surface but make sure that you wipe it off because there's going to be ink that's going to collect onto this freehand shield and that's going to cause you problems. It's going to actually transmit uh, ink from the freehand shield that's collecting onto your surface. So you want to circumvent that whenever you can and that's by wiping them off uh, frequently before ink or paint can collect. One second rule is really going to keep you from putting down area, you know, ink that you shouldn't be putting down, or, you know, from building it up. Also, not really pay attention to where the light is. So you can see it's a little bit lighter right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm paying attention with the one second rule so I don't put down, you know, ink or a shadow where there's actually a light so hey thank you Leticia says I'm amazing you're amazing Leticia thank you so much I appreciate that oh my god it's 1123 we're almost at the end of today's live stream it was very fun I'm so glad you guys came and hung out with me today. I appreciate that so much. So let me just lift this up a little bit. There we go. There. So you see, we uh, I just saved that light area. And it's a little darker here. And then her shoulder comes down right about there. And remember, it's not always the object itself that describes the form. So sometimes, oftentimes, it's what's around it. So I want you to see that here in this case. You'll see that as I paint around it, you see that shoulder starts to reveal itself. See how that shoulder starts coming out there? This is her clavicle right there. And we can use a freehand shield to pull that out. Keep that beautiful hard edge. And it's great, we're still with the light mixture, so nothing is really too harsh that's going to, you know, cause any kind of problems that we can't fix down the line. But let's I put down a little edge here on the bottom of that shoulder so it's not really there. So let me get rid of that. So you see now just getting rid of here so to soften that up, you really feel how it feels much more round. Okay, so right here we can soften this area up there on her nose. That's going to be much softer. So once I come in with the mid-tones here, that nose is going to soften up and shape up the way that the reference looks. And then we can go ahead and darken this area up where it's more in shadow. We have so far to go with this, but I think it's a pretty good start so far. Uh, Mike says, I would not miss these Wednesdays unless I'm really hurting or sick as a dog. I love these two hours more than any time of the week. Mike, that means really a lot to me. Thank you for saying that. And thank you for feeling that way. And it just lets me know that I'm doing the right thing by doing these live streams. And making sure that, you know, I keep them a priority in my week. Because, you know, you guys enjoy them and I enjoy doing them. But I think it's something that, you know, as far as live streams, that, uh, you know, as far as live streams, I, I think I try to be the most giving in the live streams. Mike, thank you so much. It's always great talking to you, and I look forward to next week, Mike. I hope you have a wonderful week. If you have any questions, always feel free to give me an email, and I'll try and get back to you ASAP. Now the thumbnail I'm going to change as soon as the live stream is over because it has the old thumbnail. So don't be alarmed. I'm going to change that if you check out the live stream later this evening. 
Uh, but I'm going to try and change that thumbnail pretty fast on YouTube. Let's establish that ear there by putting the tone on this side. This is a soft edge next to her neck, next to the hair. So I'm not going to use a freehand shield. But I can decrease my uh, distance to get it a little bit darker. And the light mixture, that's a really light mixture. So remember, the lighter you go, the more control you have. It gets a little bit harder at the nape of her neck here. Well, I'm glad that they're, that, you know, that you're able to watch, and that's why I do these, because those who can't afford, you know, like yourself, I'm, I'd love to have these available for you, definitely. And for those who want to go deeper and could afford it, there's also, uh, you know, people can purchase, you know, either classes or, you know, other things. So I'm glad too, Mike, definitely. So thank you for saying that and feeling that way. So you see right now we sort of uh, trying to darken things up just get a little more so right now we just want to get structure right it's most important right now to get the structure of her like let's say if you're looking far away you really feel that you know she's in space and light is hitting her and shadow so that's why we are you know just doing the larger shapes right now but still uh getting some of the uh tighter details leticia says uh tim is amazing you're amazing thank you so much i appreciate that and uh Oh, I appreciate that so much, Leticia. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that. I do love it, right? I do love talking about painting and showing you guys. But, you know, you can always go deeper. And for those who want to go deeper and have the means, I do have my one-on-one -on -one, uh, Skype lessons online, which are very helpful. So definitely look into that if you guys can but yeah definitely have this for you answer any questions for you Mike and I want you I want your airbrushes to come alive and really reach your full potential in art so that's my goal so I'm so glad I'm able to do that with you Mike you know I'm reaching my potential and you as well And I think that's fantastic. Okay, it is 11.30, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. So not bad, right? I think we did pretty good for two hours, the first two hours. But we learned a lot. We learned how to, you know, after we project it, to refine the drawing, right? So crucial. Then we learned how to use a very good airbrush to put in the white and with the new white mixture so we have just enough white to lay it down and slowly build it up as light is on the surface remember it's like snow on a mountaintop where it's the peaks you see more snow and then less as it trickles down same thing with the forms so with that uh, being said please hit the like button if you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit the subscribe button and if you want Go to paintedglyphs.com and check out my ink mixtures. They're really inexpensive and they really, really make your airbrushing so easy. And I'm so glad you're back, Wendy. So cool. And I hope you guys have a great happy birthday to Leticia coming up. That's really cool. I think Leticia's going to be 29. I'm not sure. At least she looks 29. So you guys take care of yourselves. 
Bye, guys.